Hi everybody, uh, welcome to a quick demonstration of how to use Code Anywhere to develop uh, with the Yeoman Bauer Grunt uh, stack. And I just want to preface this by saying that I know that uh, we are moving from Grunt to Gulp in the uh, Yeoman community and uh, the web app generator has already been moved to, to Gulp. Um, however, I'm basing this video to go alongside uh, this uh, Introduction to Building Web Apps project book that I've created and so far the official Angular generator still uses Grunt so I'm going to stick with Grunt for the web app uh, generator as well as we learn these early concepts. Um, the same thing applies for uh, a, a project using Gulp. So um, if you're if you're sophisticated enough to move on to Gulp, hopefully you can translate whatever you you learn in this project into Gulp. Um, but to get going, uh, here is the fr the second chapter of the Introduction to Building Web Apps book, which is about setting up your development environment. And I get a lot of questions from students um, because uh, Node can be difficult to install on a computer. Um, if you're on, on Windows, it can be difficult to get set up and going um, with a good command line development environment. Uh, if you have permissions that get screwed up, they can be a real pain to track down and, and figure out what's going wrong. Um, so if you follow the wrong tutorial and you're pseudoing around or something, that, that can be really destructive. So these things are, um, are not necessarily the easiest things to get set up. And it's not always necessary to answer all of the questions about why something is going wrong on your personal computer. And one real advantage to a service like Code Anywhere is that you can create containers for whatever you want and and those are basically just computers that live in the cloud for you and if you get it messed up or if you find that you did something wrong or if you want to start again and try again you can just destroy it and create a new one um, just in preparing for this video I've created and destroyed probably four or five containers this morning and um, it's not a problem at all and it really gives you that flexibility that you need to be able to learn and understand what's going on so I actually really encourage people to get started in a web-based IDE like code anywhere or some other virtual server environment just so that you can experiment and play and figure out what works and what breaks things and when you break things you're, you're not out of you know your personal computer or your personal dev space so to get things going we're first going to make a repository because I think it's easier uh, given the code anywhere workflow to base it base your project on a repository so we're going to create a new repository and this is just going to be my yo demo and I'm going to call it yeoman bower grunt workflow demo using code anywhere I'm gonna put a readme in it like I always do uh, we don't need to get ignored because our generator will put one in there for us but I'm gonna go ahead and, and throw in an MIT license just so that people are able to grab this if they feel like it so now we've created this on our github account and we have this yo demo uh, repository you call yours whatever you want your project to be now what I need to do is create a new container and I'm just going to use my default project here and create a new con connection which uh, creates a container and I'm going to go into github here and once it loads the github repos we should be able to find the repo here now I have found that sometimes when I'm developing if I create a brand new repository on github and I've already accessed my GitHub repositories in Code Anywhere. It can take a while for Code Anywhere to actually update their cache of which repositories I have. That's annoying, but it's not a total blocker. What I can do is I can go back to the GitHub repo. I can copy the SSH clone URL from my GitHub repository. And then I can um, just use the git from URL uh, option. One thing that I do want to point out is if you are using GitHub to fetch your repo, which it still hasn't updated, make sure that you uncheck this auto detect stack, which, which was checked before. Um, your repository could be interpreted as all kinds of things. Um, you want to be able to tell it exactly what, what stack to use. So now I'm going to paste in uh, the demo re repo that I just created. Uh, this is the SSH clone URL for this demo repo. 
and I'm going to pick a development stack. And I'm going to pick HTML5 on Ubuntu. And you notice that this says it's an HTML5 development stack with Apache, NPM, Yeoman, Bower, and Grunt. And if you go back and look in the project book, you'll notice that Yeoman, Bower, Grunt, and NPM which is node package manager, so that means node is also present on the machine. Those are the things that we actually need to be able to do our development. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that, and I'm going to give it a name, and I'm just gonna call it Yo Demo. And it's now creating this container. And So now that it's created our container, we can open it up and we can see that all we have is the license and the readme file, which we created when we, uh, when we made the repository. Um, I'm going to open up the SSH terminal here. And you'll notice that if we run yo doctor, which is the command that you run to check the status of your yeoman system, it runs. We say, yes, you can gather statistics and everything looks all right. So this is great. So essentially, if we click back over here to the book, we've gone through everything down to installing a generator. So now we need to install this generator using this command right here. And we're gonna install the web app generator and we're gonna install the previous version that used Grunt, um, because like I said, we're gonna stick with Grunt for the time being uh, as we're working through the book. So I'm going to run that and that's going to install the web app generator on this container. Now that we have this installed, we can actually bootstrap our project template. So we can just run the yo web app command, which is the very next part that is described in the book. We want all of these components involved, so we're just going to hit enter. So it looks like we got an error. Let's refresh our files here and see. Sometimes um, errors happen when you're doing a node install or Bower install, NPM install or Bower install. That looked like that died on the NPM install. So I'm just gonna try running it again. Sometimes network issues cause errors to happen. Okay, so that, um, that finished successfully that time, and then now we just need to run Bower install. Um, these are the two commands that you run whenever you clone out uh, a Yeoman generated project, typically, uh, npm install and Bower install. Bower install went very quickly, and so now we have um, everything here. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the files over here so that we can make sure that we see all the latest files shown. And in order to be able to to preview this site, um, we're gonna use the Grunt server. But by default, Grunt server expects to work at the IP address 127.0.0.1, or just the name localhost, which is what's known as the localhost loopback, or home. Um, that's not ideal when we're working with a remote container like this. We actually want uh, Grunt to reveal this website on the preview uh, address for our container. Um, for each container, Code Anywhere gives us a preview address. We can always preview a container and we can see what's there. If we um, preview the container now by simply hitting run, you'll notice that by default it's just showing us everything that's in the root of this container, which is just our project so far. What we actually want to do is change the way that Grunt serve um, will serve it so that we can access it at a different port on this address. So we're going to go into the grunt file and I'm going to use um, the find tool to find 
the browser sync definition. Oh, browser sync, browser sync definition. And this is where the browser sync task is defined. Browser sync is the tool that's giving us the server and also doing a few other really cool things that um, you can explore a little bit later on as you poke around. We need to add a host option and that's going to be a string and the string is going to be 0.0.0.0. This is another special IP address that reveals all of the locations for the machine that you're using. So it is. Um, it means that localhost will keep on working. Um, if we were on this machine and we wanted to access it, we could still use 127.0.0.1, but we could also use um, uh, the named address that Code Anywhere assigns. So I'm going to save that file, and then I'm going to click back to my SSH terminal. And in this SSH terminal, In this SSH terminal, I'm going to uh, run grunt serve, and that's going to serve it out. And it's going to give me a little bit of misleading information. Down at the bottom here, it's going to say a local and external U, uh, HTTP locations. Neither of these are exactly going to work, but what we want to do is pay attention to these um, port numbers at the end. So the external site is going to be at port 9000. So if I go back here and I click in here, I can go to the end of my URL and just add a colon 9000 and hit enter. And you will see that now I see the, the page that Grunt is serving out. So this is the actual page that I'm working on. And if I go over to Code Anywhere and go into my app folder and open up my index.html, I can actually change. Um, from hello, hello to um, hello, hello. And I'll save that and Grunt will automatically detect that and update that here in this, in this browser. So that's excellent. Um, I'm also using browser sync. So it means that I could open up this URL in another browser, like say Firefox here and I can see it here. And the other cool thing is that if I scroll in Firefox, it's actually gonna also scroll in Chrome. So you see that's Chrome in the background and Firefox in the foreground. And if I click a link in Firefox, it's, it's actually going to click that link in Chrome also, but of course the links don't do anything. So, um, but it would, if, the, if they went to a different URL, it would, it would move you to another URL. So that's really, really cool. Um, another thing that you can do with browser sync is you could come into a new tab, I'm gonna paste in that URL again and change the port number to 3001. And that will actually take me to the browser sync interface here. And so then I could do things like network throttling to get an idea of how my website would work across different networks and all kinds of other things and adjust the sync, op sync options and everything across those browsers. So browser sync is a very powerful tool. It's an excellent one to use. And it's really all that you have to do to get this stuff running in code anywhere is adjust the one line of your grunt file to add in this host configuration under browser sync and then to just be a little bit smart about how you make this URL. And to get that URL, you just right click on the name of your container and hit run. That gives you the base URL and then you just need to add these port numbers at the end of that base URL to access the different features of Browser Sync, either the website you're working on or the control website for all of Browser Sync. So the, that's basically how you use the Yeoman and Grunt um, and Bower interface within Code Anywhere. If you wanted to, um, you know, commit your changes now that you've bootstrapped your project, you would use Control C to break out of the Grunt server, and then you could run your git command. So you could say git status, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So you could say, um, and you'll notice that it also made a git ignore file that corresponds to the yeoman setup. So you can say git add dash capital A, 
which is sometimes a little dangerous, but okay when you're starting on a project like this often. And then if we get status again, we'll get a, a big list of all the things that are gonna be added to our commit. We can git commit-m initialized project, and then do a git push origin. And you notice that it pushed from master to master. So if we go back here, we can refresh this page and we see all of our files have come across. So we now have our project on GitHub, all updated on code anywhere, we can run it and we can uh, then use the awesome browser sync preview browser and the great uh, tools of browser sync, which is quite smart and, and good to use. So that's the basics of how to get the standard Yeoman Bauer Grunt workflow operational on a Code Anywhere container. Hope this was fun and interesting. Um, we, we might continue working through more videos, but if you are interested, you can go to seanr.getbooks.io and read Introduction to Building Web Apps and see more about how to work with all this technology. Um, take care. See you soon. Bye.